In the ancient temple of Medinet Habu, Dr. Chris Naunton is looking for answers carved into the stones. Depictions of armed men. Terrible violence. Images of a pharaoh in the heat of battle. One of the themes that's the commonest in a temple like this is of Pharaoh conquering his enemies, and that's exactly what we can see here. Pharaoh's shown on the left, almost twice the size of his captured enemies here, and he's holding them by the hair. And this is conveying the message to whoever saw this, that Pharaoh is the, the mightiest, the most powerful, in full control over his foreign enemies. But whether or not this would have borne any relation to reality is open to some question. Gripping his victims by the hair and preparing to strike. Smiting. Brutal justice visited by a pharaoh on his enemies. But how true to life is this portrayal of a pharaoh at war? You've got to take anything that's represented on an Egyptian temple wall with a few pinches of salt. These are idealized images, images for the gods, images for eternity, images that do not clearly relate always to reality. You can't show him weak. You can't show him indecisive. You show him victorious and glorious and always with the upper hand. That is the nature of Egyptian monuments. That's the nature of Egyptian monumental presentation. A different picture emerges back at the Cairo Museum. The mummies that we have closest in time to second end rays, none of them have any signs that can be attributed to wounds inflicted during campaigning. Great warrior pharaohs like Tutmosis III, Amenhotep II, King Ahmose, these are all described as great warriors. But when you look at the mummies, there's nothing to indicate a lifetime spent fighting enemies on the battlefield. Of all these pharaohs with warrior reputations, only Second Enre has wounds inflicted by a battle axe. But there are inconsistencies in the evidence. And for Dr. Shepard, the forensics just aren't adding up. The only information we have about the wounds on 2nd NRA are produced by Elliot Smith from his post-mortem report from 1912. And what he says in his report is, the absence of any injuries to the arms or to any other part of the body shows that no resistance could have been offered to the attack. Now, that's really very interesting forensically because normally you would expect someone in the middle of a melee, in the middle of a battle, to receive injuries from many parts once they begin to go down, certainly and for them to try and defend themselves against those injuries. And these are what we call defensive injuries. And the commonest ones are on the arms and legs, particularly the ulna, the outer board of the arm, where the arms are raised and blows might be struck against it. There are gripping injuries to the hands as they grab the ends of swords or knives. All sorts of injuries distributed throughout the body. So looking at the injuries that Second Enre has, the complete absence of any injuries elsewhere in the body, the focus of the injury to the head, suggests to me that he was nowhere near the front line of a battle. 